What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Neat History. I'm Jake, and today we're going to be talking about ancient Egypt and the invention of beer. So what a lot of people don't know is that Egypt was actually credited with the invention of beer, even though they didn't technically create it. Um, how the story goes is that the Sumerians actually invented beer, but they did a really bad job. Uh, allegedly, uh, ancient Sumerian beer was super thick and just had like a gross consistency, similar to porridge. Um, you couldn't even sip on it. They served it in a bowl. Um, and they actually invented the straw so that you could drink it through the straw. The reason being that it had a lot of gross like malt and other material floating on the top of it. And it was just something you'd want to be sipping on out of a glass like you would with a regular beer today. So Egypt took that recipe and they made it super simple. They made it smoother, lighter. Uh, it could be poured into cups or a glass, similar to how we do today. Uh, to the point where the Greeks at the time actually looked at Sumerian beer and thought it was disgusting, but credited Egypt as highly skilled brewers. So why is Egypt credited with the history of beer? Well, it's largely in matter of them telling it to themselves. So according to myth, the god Osiris himself actually instructed Egypt um, how to brew craft beer. Uh, pretty cool. Beer is a gift from the gods. But the more common theory is a different Egyptian myth, which is also known as the destruction of mankind. So the destruction of mankind, pretty bad name, kind of inaccurately titled, is the story of the great god Ra. He try, he gets tired of humanity's kind of, he gets tired of their bullshit. He gets tired of people asking like assholes. He's kind of bummed out. He looks down on earth and says, hey, everyone's being a bummer. So he decides he's going to unleash Sekhmet. Um, PSA, I am not an ancient scholar. I don't know how to pronounce any of these names, so bear with me as I rough through some of these. Um, so anyway, he unleashes Sekhmet. Uh, he's going to take care of this whole problem with humans going on on Earth. So he sends him down to Earth with the goal, she, he sends she down to Earth with the goal of just rampaging from one community to another um, and drinking people's blood, tearing them apart, similar to like a vampire, I guess you could say. Uh, however, about halfway through her rampage, some of the other gods pointed out that if Sekhmet continued doing what she was doing, there were going to be no humans left on Earth. Who was going to make sacrifices? Who was going to worship the gods? And Ra decided, eh, that might have been a bad call on my part. So he decides that he's going to retract Sekhmet. Uh, we're going to leave it alone. We're just going to go back to business as usual. At this point, Sekhmet is on like a bloodlust killing spree. Uh, Ra has no longer in control, so he decides he's going to get creative and put a plan in place to destroy Sigmet. So what he does is he creates a large quantity of beer and dyes it red, and then delivers it to a city directly in Sigmet's path. Sigmet rolls up on this town um, and decides that she's going to drink all the beer because it looks like blood. So she finds the beer, drinks it, thinks it's blood, and gets super drunk. Passes out and wakes up as a better person. She wakes up as Hathor, a uh, kind and gentle friend to humanity. This story is actually enlightened in Egyptian history through one of their biggest festivals. It's the Festival of Tech, the Tech Festival. That's T-E-K-H. I might be butchering the name. But it's one of the most popular festivals in Egypt, and it actually dates back to the Middle Kingdom, although they think it might even be older. And it kind of died out for a little bit, but it was somewhat reinvented during the New Kingdom and was also revamped during the Roman Empire. Pardon me. So to put this festival in perspective, this was known as the Festival of Drunkness. What happened was for days, people would get hammered off some of the highest quality beers. They'd party in the street. They'd pass out in the street. Um, as many know, maybe some don't, Egyptians had a natural lust for life. So there was a lot of sex going on during these festivals. There was a lot of just like overall wild stuff happening it was pretty much like a insane party for days at a time the catch was if you passed out drunk you woke up to roaring ha uh, hammers the next morning people ringing bells things like that because apparently if you pass out drunk and then wake up to a hammer you would see the gods uh, that only kind of starts where how much of an impact beer had on ancient egypt um even from its beginnings, so women were the first brewers in Egypt. And similar to the gin craze, it was one of the few jobs women could do at the time, even though women were highly respected in Egyptian culture. Uh, it was only one of 
maybe two jobs they could do. They could be their baker or brew beer. Um, and it remained a woman run industry until it became a state funded industry later on in Egyptian history. But the early feminine influence on brewing um, is estimated to kind of date back to a goddess of the time. Her name is Tenenet. I might be butchering the name here. It's T-E-N-E-N-E-T, if anyone wants to look it up. Um, but she was the goddess of beer, and she watched over the brewers and made sure that their recipes were fantastic and that all the beer was of the best quality. So kind of the best god to have on your side at the time. Uh, her influence on beer was actually so important that beer off early on had a name called Tenemu, um, which was named for her. But a lot of these early beers... Uh, were super similar to the beers we have today as far as like alcohol by volume goes. They were generally around three or four percent. Um, and a lot of them were broken up and classified by different strengths and flavors. So at the time, and I believe as I mentioned in the Gin Craze podcast, being drunk wasn't necessarily a bad thing to be doing in public. Um, men, women, and children all drank beer. It was considered more of a source of nutrition than an intoxicant, and it was regularly used for just consumption on daily life because people didn't want to drink the water. The water was dirty. Um, and you had to boil the water anyway. You had to boil beer, but it'll drink beer. So beer became a super staple in early diet um, just for, comp uh, for general life as well as for compensation for work. So sometimes you'd work, maybe you're building pyramids or whatever, um, and instead of getting paid with coin, you'd be paid with three bottles of beer instead as a measure of wealth. Um, on top of this, beer was kind of the staple of medicine. If you think Advil today, you should probably think beer back then. Uh, it was a part of over 100 medicinal recipes. And even if beer wasn't a direct recipe of whatever the treatment was, they often recommended that you should take your prescription with a cup of beer just to gladden the heart. Uh, sometimes it'd be prescribed solely, just drink a cup of beer, see what happens. Uh, don't like your odds there, but hey, go for it. We'll see how it works out. Um, that said, and kind of how it starts to tie into why they got credited with the creation of modern beer is that every brewer had its own specialty. A lot of them worked on creating higher uh, alcohol by volume percentage. Uh, so some were really good at that. Others were working on creating different flavors, maybe adding honey and stuff like that to really boost some flavor. Um, the most common beer at the time was rich, uh, slightly sweet ale, kind of like a brown ale that you'd have today. But most beers were similar to a lager, and they were often the one used for occasions uh, like festivals and stuff like that. Uh, so at the time of the old kingdom of Egypt, beer was brewed, cooked, uh, it, was, it was made out of loaves of bread. So people would use bread and water. They'd place it in a mixing jar, heat the jar, ferment. Um, to a modern day drinker, they would kind of taste like a fruity drink rather than a beer. Um, and then they'd often add like dates and honey um, to increase the alcohol volume and then also add some sweetness to it. Um, but by the time the New Kingdom rolls around, they'd actually discovered barley and wheat and started using that to ferment as well. Um, super similar to how we create beer today. They'd mix it with water, create a mash. Uh, they'd pour that into vats, heat the vats to ferment. It'd go through a super similar process, and they'd pull it out, seal it in a jug, store it, and it'd kind of come out like a lager. Lastly, one of the biggest things to get credit for, and it really shows the deepness of beer in the Egyptian culture, is they're one of the first ones to start getting drunk at funerals. So funerals would happen. We all know mummification, blah, blah, blah. They'd go to the funeral, perform the ritual, and then gather around the tomb and start to drink beer and talk about the deceased and how much they enjoyed life. It really reflects on not only modern culture and how we act in a lot of ways similar to that, but how much the Egyptians enjoyed life and appreciated life and understood that when it's gone, it's gone, but there is some sort of afterlife, I guess you could say. I'm not sure what their specifics were, but we all know mummies. So, you know, um, lastly, one of the biggest reasons why it just shows how much beer was important to their culture is it was brewed in temples and offered to the gods. So the common thing is that since Osiris gave them the knowledge of beer, the only way they could show their gratitude was by returning the fruits of that knowledge with beer, the drink of the gods. So they pass it back on and the cycle continues. So anyway, that's my quick episode on the history of beer. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know I had mentioned that we were going to be doing a episode on tiki drinks and the history of tiki cocktails. That is going to be coming up, but it's going to be late this week. I uh, just want to do this quick one on beer. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, please subscribe. Subscribe.